Mountains are good for the soul. Up here, stress gives way, at least in good weather, to serenity. There's a sense of timelessness in the mountains, enduring, everlasting. The reality, though, is that the Alps are not what they were. By some estimates, 30% of the alpine ice cover has disappeared over the past century. Glacier takes several decades, um, glacier of this size, to respond to a change in the climate. Um, Dr. Doug Mayer of Cambridge University has been studying the Arola Glacier in Switzerland for six years. You can visibly see the snout, the front of the glacier, retreating year by year. Um, it's going back at about 20 metres a year, um, which is quite dramatic. And we've lost, in height, we've lost all the way from that sort of grey gravel material all the way down to where it is now, sort of 200 metres of, of uh, ice is lost in height as well. And um, this is typical of glaciers all over the Alps in that they've been retreating steadily um, in fits and starts, so, you know, during different periods. Um, for the last 150 years, since 1850. And that time scale neatly accords with the Industrial Revolution in Europe. In the global warming debate, the Alps are Exhibit A. In the Sass Valley, there are classic postcard scenes at almost every turn. People live surrounded by nature. At the Mill House in Amagel, the Zerbrigans think this is close to paradise. And yet Helmut acknowledges the precarious nature of mountain life. Also, the glaciers sind schon gefährlich in gewissen Zonen. Aber dort, wo es ist eingeteilt in der Schweiz, wo, wo ist die Gefahrenzone, wo ist keine Gefahrenzone. Und wir wohnen jetzt hier nicht in einer Gefahrenzone. The water that falls so prettily in the Zabrigan backyard is the runoff from glaciers a thousand meters above them. Tracking the source of the glacial melt requires a punishing drive up precarious slopes. The locals boast this is the highest road in Europe. It's also one of the worst. Tourists don't use it. But valley people are constantly monitoring the terrain, hoping to identify land slippages and rock falls before they happen. That's fantastic. Alvin Venets works at the local cable car company and helps run his family's tourist hotel. His future is directly tied to what happens up in the mountains. You know, the glacier is, is going back all the time and there is more moraines all the time. And it's always a game. Before, years ago, they always told us a glacier will grow seven years, and afterwards it will go back seven years. And this rule doesn't, is, not, is not true anymore, because in the last years it went back all the time. Glacial melt is naturally enough most obvious in summer. In winter, the glacier advances and retreats under the weight of snow. In another part of Switzerland's Valais region, British scientists have spent 10 years investigating the movements of the Arola Glacier. doing is Ian's sticking on um, this this metal uh, stem here which has gone on the end of a hundred meter long hose and uh, it's got a special attachment at the end here and when we pump up the drill uh, very hot high pressurized water comes at the end of this uh, tip here. The hose tip follows the path of a borehole drilled more than 100 meters down through the ice and rock. The object is to see how the hole has been deformed in the past year by the movements of the glacier. More broadly, research is focused on the tracking of water flows through the glacier. In sort of simple terms, you could imagine the, 
water being a bit like oil, like a lubricant. And if we've got inefficient drainage, the water becomes pressurised and it can actually jack the glacier up under hydraulic pressure and therefore it will move faster because we've reduced the friction. Whereas if you've got really efficient drainage, such as in effect like rivers flowing underneath the glacier, the pressures tend to be lower and basically the ice is, rather than being floated by the water under high pressure, it tends to move much more slowly. Mountain people are used to living with the threats that come from nature. Avalanches, landslippages, rock falls and flash floods, which may account for the strong faith of the villagers. Im Namen des Vaters und des Sohnes und des Heiligen Geistes. Amen. The church of Maria Himmelfahrt dates from 1812. Two previous churches were destroyed by rock falls, and boulders still occasionally crash down. Almost all the worshippers here have known tragedy. Una Kalbermarken and her sister Verena Bergener recall as if it were yesterday what happened one late summer's day in 1965 on the Alleline Glacier. Schau mal, ich will dir zeigen, wo ist der Gletscher gewesen vorher, als er heruntergekommen ist. Da oben siehst du, da wo ist die berote Moräne, da wo ist das Wasser kommt heraus. Da hat er gestanden, wenn er abgebrochen ist. Und nachher ist er ganz unten da gerutscht. 88 workers were buried under half a million cubic tons of ice and rock. They'd been building a new dam, the Matmark in the valley at the base of the glacier. Sicher, das ist für mich sehr traurig, wissen Sie. Ja. Weil viele Leute habe ich gekannt, viele, viele Leute, die da gearbeitet haben. Ja, sehr viele, weil ich bin da hinten auf der Alpe gewesen. Ja, am anderen Tag bin ich da gekommen, da zu Fuß, und habe das Bild alles angeschaut. Und dann hat man uns schon gesagt, wer tot ist. Ja, haben wir das alles mitbekommen. The collapse of the Alaline Glacier remains Switzerland's worst post-war natural disaster, and memory of it is seared into the consciousness of valley people. Und dann ist er abgebrochen, circa eine Million Kubik, und das geht hier nach unten an an die Moräne, und dann ist es hier zurückgegangen. Und die Leute sind hier dann auf die falsche Seite gelaufen, weil sie gedacht haben, das geht da weiter. Da haben sie es hier gedreht. Fears of a similar catastrophe in the Saas Valley are ever-present and are heightened by scares about global warming. Ein Thema ist es immer wieder, wenn es von den Medien aufgegriffen etwas passiert, jetzt wie in Grindelwald, dass die, ein Gletscher abgestürzt ist von 30.000 Kubik und sie rechnen noch, dass ca. 70.000 Kubik noch fallen werden. Dann wird das in den Medien gezeigt und dann wird man auch darüber sprechen. At two and a half thousand meters above sea level, the Arola Glacier is perilous. It's riven with crevasses. Fall in one of them and there's little likelihood of escape. So we've got a pretty good view of the glacier yes, from up here. Set the jordan meter up. See if the glacier's moved since yesterday. Doug Mayer and PhD student Becky Goodsell have traversed up the moraine wall to survey the glacier. This is the jordan meter. It's uh, surveying an electronic distance measuring device. And it. And now it's fine. And when you hear that noise, What's happening is there's an infrared beam right. coming out the front of the geodimeter. Right. It's going out to the prism, getting reflected back, and when it picks up a reflection, it makes a noise right. just to let you know. And the, uh, the center of the glacier at this time of year 
is generally moving at around three centimeters a day, right. and the edge is about uh, one and a half centimeters a day. So what we get is, if the rate of melting today continues, we're probably looking at within somewhere between um, 70 and 100 years, this glacier will just be, will have separated into a couple of small cirque glaciers and will not really be able to be classified as a valley glacier as such. I'll be late for Vice Picture and Train tickets, please. Let me see the play. Extinction of the glaciers would be disastrous for the tourist trade. It's Switzerland's second biggest earner. Even in relatively quiet valleys like the Sass, foreign visitors have been a source of unprecedented prosperity. Oh, well, you like this? Well, I, hope I, like, I hope I like it a lot, actually. It looks pretty good. Um, <laughs> At the Venets family's hotel in Sassgrund, Alvin is wary of the doomsday scenarios being promoted. If I'm, if I'm um, speaking with other people, they say that the, 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 the time is for getting better and it will cool down and, uh, and uh, the glaciers will grow again. There, there are people in the Swiss government who tell you that? Or? Yeah, yeah, especially. Yeah. Because I have a lot of connections with people who are studying the glaciers and so on and they're saying it's, it was already years before where the glaciers went back all the time, but uh, the time will go on and uh, we'll get a new um, area. A new growth. A okay. new growth, yeah. yeah. Tourism isn't the only industry likely to be hit by climate change. Switzerland's heavily subsidised rural industries will be directly affected and with it, important elements of the national heritage. In summer, the famous fighting cows of the Valais are able to graze in the high pastures. This is the time of the year when villagers hold what are called cow parties. And the star of this one is mandolin. Mandolin's owner, Sebastian Antimaki, explains why she's being fated as queen cow of the month. <laughs> Sebastian doesn't want to contemplate big changes in the pattern of his life, which is understandable enough, but it may be forced upon him. The Switzerland seems particularly beset by our warmer world. The 90s have been the hottest decade of the century. Came at the edge of the moon. Right, okay. This glacier is like a vast laboratory. Experiments produce okay. much-needed data, but drawing definitive conclusions is another matter entirely. You'll never get a con con consensus among scientists as to whether it's definitely uh, human-induced global warming, greenhouse effect, or not. It's certainly a very plausible theory, and um, if we wait um, the several hundred years that it would require for us to be absolutely sure whether or not this was uh, the greenhouse effect or global, or global warming um, by human means, then it would be too late to do anything about it because of the time lags involved in climate systems. Um, you, we would have had several hundred years of greenhouse effect and it would probably have an effect on uh, global climate for you know, hundreds and thousands of years after that. By which time, of course, the glaciers would have long since vanished into history.